We want to take you though, staying regional, staying regional. This is really important. This is uh, an important interview that I'm glad Ryan found this one. Um, we're going to go to the Bemidji area. So uh, Lake Itasca, you know it, you love it. We know it as the headwaters of the Mississippi, just sort of southwest of, of Bemidji. Uh, when we think of lakes, I don't know about you, but when I think about lakes in northern Minnesota, I think about that clear, crystal clear water. It's not, you know, polluted, all of that. But Lake Itasca is kind of um, sticking out as, as having some problems here. And it's actually been on the decline for several years. So we wanted to know why. And we asked the person uh, who we thought would probably have the best insight into this. Uh, it's Jim Cotner, professor and uh, uh, ecologist at the University of Minnesota. And Jim, is it true that you're joining us from uh, Oslo? No, I'm actually in Bergen, Norway. Well, thank you for so. correcting that. Bergen, Norway. <laughs> well, we're so glad. What time is it right now in Bergen? Uh, about uh, 7.20. In the evening, all right. PM. Well, thank you, for, <laughs> thank you for joining us. We really uh, appreciate it. And it sounds like you, you're there uh, temporarily and, and, uh, and doing some, some teaching there. But we really wanted to ask you about some of this because it's, it's pretty fascinating. Um, why did you start, what was it, two decades ago, looking at uh, Lake Itasca? Well, uh, one of the main reasons I started looking at it is it's very convenient because it's uh, located um, right next to the University of Minnesota's biological station, which is right there on the shore of Lake Itasca. And so I started studying it uh, pretty much about 30 years ago. And, uh, you know, I've been looking at the changes that have been, have been occurring for quite a long time now. Yeah. Um, so and, well, I, I have to, a pretty good feel for what's going on. Oh, oh absolutely. <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm really interested to, to learn about, you know, when you study something for that many decades, that's the best insight, right? Anybody can kind of come on in and, and take, a, take a quick look. But I wanted to ask you about this. So the DNR has given Lake Itasca a, a C plus rating, which doesn't really mean much to most of us here watching. So what is that score? What do they take into account? And how does it compare, I guess, to other northern Minnesota lakes? Uh, yeah, well, they take a lot of things into account. They look at the biology of the lake. Um, they look at the water quality, and that's one of the main reasons that the Tasca uh, scored relatively low. Um, they look at basically the visual aspects of the lake. How, to, how has it changed? How has development around the lake changed? And in the case of Itasca, as pointed out in a uh, Star Tribune article that they, um, I think is where you got my yeah. name from, yeah. uh, they, you know, the author of the article pointed out that, you know, a lot of the lakes around there are not deteriorating, or at least not as much as Lake Itasca has over that uh, 30 or 40 year time period. Mm -hmm. And there's several reasons that is probably the case. Uh, lake Itasca is kind of an unusual lake. You know, when you're, when you're up there on the lake, most of us don't see what's going on underneath. And one thing that's interesting about Itasca that makes it a really interesting biological system is that it's very shallow. Mm. Um, it's a huge lake but it's quite shallow. So about one of the things that limnologists such as myself do is we look at how much of the water is at different depths in a lake. And so you can imagine if a lake is very steep sided, um, it's, you know, sort of like a, a swimming pool, you know? So there's not it doesn't gradually go into the middle of the lake, but Lake Itasca is quite, uh, it, um, is quite shallow on the edges. It only has a little deep spot in the middle of mm. it. And so what that means is basically in the top uh, one meter or three feet of the lake, you can get, you have about 50% of the volume of the lake.
Wow. And so that means it's particularly vulnerable to what's happening in the climate. Um, and we've seen a lot of climate change in that part of our state over the last 30 or so years. Warming temperatures, warming winters, uh, which leads to less ice cover. Um, we see less snowfall and more precipitation actually in total. So um, all those things kind of contribute to making uh, a task particularly vulnerable to some of the changes that are occurring. And, and Jim, so have we reached a point, as you've been studying this now for 30 years, have we reached a point where you're raising your hand and you're saying, okay, something needs to change, we're at a pretty uh, you know, critical point, or have we seen you know, ebbs and flows of this in the past, or you know, what do we need to do right now? A lot of things are quite variable. You know, so one of the things that people use to quantify lake water quality is a secchi disk. And basically all it is is a, a white disk that you lower into the water until you can't see it anymore. And um, we've seen that the depth that that goes to now is quite a bit less than what it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, and you know that's because there's more algae growing in the lake than there were in the past. We think the main drivers of this, I, I have two hypotheses. One is just climate change. As I said, Lake Itasca is particularly vulnerable because so much of the water is close to the surface. And that means it warms up more than many other lakes, like Elk Lake, which is right upstream from Lake Itasca has seen much less change, but that's because a lot more of the volume of Elk Lake is deeper um, in the lake. It's quite uh, a deep lake. It's about uh, three times as deep as Atasca is. Hmm. Um, and so I think climate change is probably the main driver, but Lake Atasca is not unaffected by humans in the local watershed either. You know, one of the things that's changed in that time period is a lot more people go to uh, Itasca State Park. Mm -hmm. And when you go to Itasca State Park, you make a campfire. Those campfires, uh, when they burn, they release ash into the atmosphere. And that ash is full of nutrients, such as phosphorus, that helps fertilize the lake. And so that probably is playing a role mm -hmm. along with the climate change issues. Yeah, and finally, I just want to ask you about uh, solutions here. What's what's being done? What needs to be done in kind of the, the short term um, to try to get a handle on this? Well, one of the things that, uh, I mean, because it's a, it's a climate change issue, the most important thing that has to be done is we have to do a better job of uh, decreasing greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere. But that's not really a short-term mm -hmm. phenomenon. Um, that's something that is going to take decades for us to turn around. And it's happening. There's a lot of positives that are happening in terms of uh, burning fossil fuels um, that gives me a uh, some hope uh, for our future. Uh, the other thing is, you know, some ma local management uh, issues, you know, so there are things that could be done in terms of restricting fires uh, by campers around the lake. Um, I think that's probably the, the easiest and um, fastest thing that we could probably do that might make a difference. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Jim, you know, amazing. Three decades of, of taking a look at this this one lake and a lot of insight into that. And I'm sure folks, especially in that area, will be keeping a close eye uh, on, on this and the environmental impacts. Thank you for your time today sure. uh, from, from Norway. We appreciate it. Yeah, Sorry. I appreciate being able to talk to you. you Thank bet. you. Take care. All right.